This morning, a COVID outbreak hits Queensland. Four new cases. The NRL grand final now in doubt. A stern warning for people in New South Wales as infections remain stubbornly high. A spike in cases in Melbourne on the eve of restrictions being eased. And Australia's pathway out of the pandemic, rapid testing approved for use as the government plans a reopening of our international borders. This is 7 News with Angela Cox. Good morning. The Queensland Premier is under growing pressure to cancel the NRL Grand Final following a fresh COVID outbreak in Brisbane. Ben Murphy joins us live now. Ben, just how bad is this outbreak? Morning, Ange. Well, it has the potential to be very significant. Four new local transmissions. The first is here, a guest staying at the Adelong Guest House in South Brisbane. He was a truck driver who tested positive after coming across the border. He was unvaccinated as well and concerningly has been infectious in the community for more than a week. This has prompted some rule changes for truckies. By the 15th of October, any of them coming into Queensland must have had their first dose. By 15th of November, they must be double vaccinated and there'll be pop-up clinics specifically designated for truck drivers which are being set up as we speak. The second and third case in Queensland are an aviation worker and his wife. That is a separate cluster. And then the fourth is someone who's just left hotel quarantine. The Premier says that Queenslanders have been here before and she is urging people not to panic. There's no need to panic because Queenslanders have been doing the right thing, especially in the southeast. But what uh, Dr Young has said that what we will be doing, and she'll give more details, is that we want to go back to uh, people wearing their masks indoors. There is a cloud of uncertainty hovering over the NRL Grand Final. It is still scheduled to take place this weekend and still move forward. The Chief Health Officer has indicated that masks will likely be a big part of that event, though, as we know, a day is a very long time in COVID and the next 24 to 48 hours will be critical. Yes, indeed. OK, Ben Murphy for us. Thank you. Let's go to Amelia Brace now, live in Sydney. Amelia, there's been a case, a spike in cases there. Yeah, unfortunately so, Angela. We were on a bit of a roll, but there was a slight increase today. 863 cases, which is up from 787 yesterday. Though it's important to note there were fewer deaths today and also significantly more tests with around 40,000 additional people coming forward. Sadly, a further seven people lost their lives. One wasn't vaccinated, three were partially vaccinated, while a further three were fully vaccinated but had only had their second dose recently so were still at high risk. That prompting the Health Minister to issue a plea to those still holding off. I hear conversations now that uh, we don't need to get vaccinated. Well, yes, you do. You need to get vaccinated. You need to go and get vaccinated as quickly as possible. Uh, you're kidding yourself if you think you don't need to get vaccinated because it may well be you that uh, gets the virus and dies or ends up in a hospital ICU. Vaccination rates across New South Wales, particularly here in Sydney, are incredibly impressive. We now have a number of suburbs which have reached the 70% double dosed rate. That, of course, is the magic number that we as a state are working towards to have some restrictions eased. At our current pace, we will hit that milestone next week, and that means that Freedom Day will be the 11th of October, which is 13 sleeps, Angela, for those of us who are counting. I think a lot of us. OK, thanks so much, Amelia. Victoria has recorded 867 new COVID cases and four new deaths. This as the Premier prepares to open more of regional Victoria while fending off criticism of his COVID plan. Paul Dowsley is live with the latest. Paul, today's numbers are a concern for health officials there. Yes, Ange, as you say, another 867 cases announced this morning, just a few more than, Victor than New South Wales, rather. That is our worst day in this pandemic, with four new deaths. And there's more bad news. The State Government and the Health Department confirming that due to a software error, a glitch in their computers, there's another 149 cases that were detected in the previous two days, but not included in our figures. So the pressure is on in Victoria now. More than 9,000 active 
cases. And we saw this last night. The spread in the northern suburbs is a concern, and we saw at the northern hospital the strain is showing. Last night, up to a dozen ambulances were forced to wait outside the hospital, thought to be with patients on board waiting to get inside. And there was pressure on our triple zero emergency line last night. The ambulance union says the wait time to be answered at one point last night was up to 10 minutes. This morning, there was yet another protest in Melbourne. Probably the smallest we've had over the past eight days of rolling demonstrations. This one was on the M2 freeway, police intercepting a convoy of eight trucks, thought to be protesting about our government mandating the vaccine for drivers who travel into New South Wales. And even in lockdown, the traffic banked up quickly on the freeway heading in towards the city. Police handed out 15 fines to those drivers and passengers who were on board. Police continue patrolling our roads today, Ange, looking for any more protests and any more convoys. OK, Paul Dowsley for us. Thank you. In breaking news, Federal Health Minister Greg Hunt has announced Australians will soon be able to test themselves for COVID-19 at home. Political reporter Taylor Aiken is live for us in Canberra. Taylor, when will this be rolled out? And the TGA has recommended that home testing kits be made available in Australia from November 1st. This will, will of course be subject to each testing kit being approved as safe and effective and will be rolled out alongside the existing PCR test. At home testing is widely used across the US and the UK as restrictions have eased there and vaccination rates have climbed. The TGA has already approved over 30 rapid tests for supervised use but will now make assessments for those te same tests to be used at home. But unlike the current PCR test, the do-it-yourself testing kits won't be free. At this stage, it would be something that uh, people uh, acquired unless it was in a workplace arrangement uh, from uh, their pharmacy. So it would be like all other uh, tests at the, uh, at the current time. Meanwhile, the TGA is expected to give updated advice later this week on whether Australia would recognise vaccines made in China and India. Currently, Australia only recognises vaccines made in Europe and the US, including Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson, Moderna and AstraZeneca. The TGA says there is limited data available on the Chinese-made vaccines, slowing the process of being able to assess each jab, including its long-term efficacy and how how effective it is against the Delta variant. And OK, Taylor, thank you. The border battle is heating up yet again with tourism operators pushing for greater clarity on when the country will be united again and who will be able to travel. Yesterday, Qantas announced a shake-up of its flight plans, bringing forward the dates that flights between Victoria and New South Wales will resume. Also announcing international travel will resume from December 18th, with destinations like Singapore, Japan, Los Angeles and London now firmly back on the travel map. However, international carriers say they won't even consider scheduling additional flights until there is a consistent approach from all states about reopening borders and with uncertainty still surrounding quarantine arrangements, tourism operators fear travellers will go elsewhere. The entire New South Wales rail network has ground to a halt this morning because of strike action. Train drivers stopped work at 9am demanding better pay and conditions. They're not due to start driving again until 1pm. With the state still in lockdown, most of the commuters affected were essential workers. A mysterious flying object seen hovering in the night sky had many people wondering if they'd seen a UFO. The white dish-shaped object was visible last night. It was spotted by locals in Sydney, the Central Coast and Dubbo, with many posting video on social media. Experts say the mysterious sighting was probably a Chinese rocket launching a new satellite into space. Next in 7 News, a frightening incident in Melbourne. A man tries to snatch a little boy off the street. He's on the run somewhere in the suburbs. R. Kelly, guilty. The American singer facing 100 years in jail for setting up a sex trafficking ring. And why someone threw an egg at French President Emmanuel Macron. That's next. Special time, Sunday, 7 o'clock. One minute I had a brother, and then the next minute, he's just gone. All of a sudden, it went bang. Major developments in this family's search for answers. That's animal blood. 
or it's human blood. Who was the driver on that day? This man has the potential to kill. Homicide with Ron Idles. Special time Sunday at 7 on 7. Be strong, Nutella lovers. Mid-mornings needn't be a challenge, because if you love Nutella in a jar, here it is, in a bar. Delicious Nutella and puffed wheat crispies in a crunchy shell. Nutella, be ready. You can see lots of stars in Cobden, Western Victoria, the home of Western Star, where for over 94 years, we've created not just butter, but a star. Western Star. More than butter. When you need the job done right, you want your pressure cleaner built like your team. Tough and ready. So reach for the rugged, reliable Spitwater Pressure Cleaner. Made in Australia since 1982. Spitwater.com.au Aldi's low prices just got lower with reductions on a huge range of products like yoghurt, rump steak, cereal, eggs, this, that, those, that... No, not that. Aldi, good, different. From the hills of the Tamar Valley, taste the difference of pure, natural goodness. Deliciously thick and creamy yoghurt. Real fruit with a serving of cream. New from Tamar Valley Dairy. The creamery, the better. That can't be legal. Like to do your own thing? He does. With Tab Same Game Multi, you can combine all your favourite markets. Like head-to-head, -head, first try score and total points into one bet for even bigger odds. Same game multi. Build it on your Tab app. Tab, long may we play. Peloton Australia, welcome. We're in this moment together, Peloton. Keep your eyes focused ahead. Richmond Meg, congrats on 100 rides. Breathe in and focus. Bring that chin to your chest. Yes, you can. Let's go, team. You got this. Welcome back to 7 News. A manhunt is underway in Melbourne after the attempted abduction of a nine-year-old. The little boy was at a Doncaster East cafe with his mum when he was approached by a heavily tattooed man who made several attempts to lure the child away with him. And he's like, come and see my car and grabbed his arm to come and see his car. And as he's brushed him off, he tried to grab his hand again and Dom's pushed him. He, he didn't look back, he just ran straight away. Police are urgently trying to identify the man fearing other children could be at risk. A man has been charged over the cold case death of a New South Wales toddler. Jordan Thompson was just 20 mu 21 months old when he died in the Hunter region 15 years ago. His mum had left him in the care of her then partner. When she returned, the boy was dead. A fatal dose of prescription medication was found in his system. Following a renewed investigation, a 49-year-old man was arrested in Sydney and charged with manslaughter. American singer R. Kelly has been found guilty of sex trafficking and racketeering. The disgraced star now faces up to 100 years behind bars for running a pedophile ring which preyed on children for nearly three decades. US Bureau Chief Ashley Mullaney has the story. It's the most high-profile conviction of a musician in the Me Too era. R. Kelly found guilty of eight counts of sex trafficking and one count of racketeering, a charge usually reserved for mob bosses, indicating these weren't just isolated incidents but rather a criminal enterprise. Uh, with the help of these brave victims, prosecutors were able to create, paint uh, a disturbing portrait of a man who abused his power, his money, his influence to ensnare women, young girls and young boys. I have been practicing law for 47 years. During this time, I have pursued many sexual predators who have committed crimes against women and children. Of all the predators that I have pursued, however, 
Mr. Kelly is the worst. The R&B star has always maintained his innocence and denied these charges, at one point becoming furious in a TV interview. I tell you, I'm 30 years of my fucking career. Robert. 30 years of my career. R. Kelly always said that he wasn't an angel, but he wasn't a monster. Prosecutors disagreed. A predator who used his inner circle to ensnare underage girls and young men and women for decades in a sordid web of sex abuse, exploitation and humiliation. After decades of carrying out this abuse, it now looks certain that R. Kelly will spend decades behind bars. An earthquake has struck the Greek island of Crete, killing one person and injuring 20 others. The 5.8 magnitude quake damaged homes and churches and caused rock slides. Several aftershocks were also recorded, sparking fears older buildings on the island would collapse. French President Emmanuel Macron has been pelted with an egg during a visit to Lyon. The egg bounced off his shoulder without breaking, while the man who threw it was immediately detained by security. The incident happened during a visit to a restaurant trade fair. It's the second time this year Macron has been assaulted. In June, he was slapped across the face while meeting hospitality workers. The US share market has edged cautiously higher as concerns over econo economic turmoil in China begin to fade. Let's bring in Network Finance Editor Gemma Acton. Gemma, our share market has just opened. How are we doing? Good morning, Ange. Well, not such a promising start here at home. While it was a broadly positive close on Wall Street, the share prices of some of its biggest names, including Microsoft, Google and Amazon, all dropped. And that set the tone for falls among some of our local technology companies, including Xero, but it's really healthcare that's dragging down the ASX 200 today, including market darlings ResMed and CSL. The Aussie dollar has been inching sideways in recent days, still buying around 72.7 US cents. In the meantime, Ange, data just out shows a 1.7% drop in retail sales over the past month. Not great, but better than the 2.5% fall analysts had been expecting. Hardest hit were clothing and footwear sales, which tumbled by 15.7% and department store sales, which slid by around 10%. Ange. OK, Gemma Acton, thank you. Six James Bond stars have stood shoulder to shoulder for the first time. No, you're not dreaming. They're made of wax, brought together by Madame Tussauds for a permanent exhibition in London. Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Roger Moore, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan and, of course, Daniel Craig. The six 007s are on display to mark Craig's final Bond film, No Time to Die. Next in 7 News Sport with Matt Carmichael, including the tug of war over Ben Simmons' future with Philadelphia in the NBA. And Tom Trebojevic's big night at the Dally M, overshadowed by another NRL controversy. We begin with breaking news tonight. When it happens, when it matters, you will not know the news. 7 News with Sharon Gadella and Max Butcher. Take it to the Nets level. It's a Titan full of water skis. And the boat's in the water. Are you coming? Hell yeah. I ski good. The shit's been here longer than the last time you had skis on, son. Out there, let's go. Come on. Need a garage or shed? Titan's got you covered. Call 13 27 36 for a Titan display centre near you. You'll be lucky you got a Titan. I was good, wasn't I, Dad? No. Time for a change. Protect and defend your livelihood. Save our businesses and our jobs. Together, we can take our country back. Authorised by Craig Kelly for the United Australia Party Brisbane. I did more than lose 30 kilos on the OptiFast program. I've got my health and confidence back too. With the OptiFast program, you can replace three, two or one meals a day, depending on how quickly you want to lose weight. Find your plan. At Coles, free picnic wear is here to collect. For every $20 you spend in one transaction, scan your Flybys card to earn one picnic wear credit. Dip, dine and share with collectible picnic wear. Coles, value the Australian way. I can read your future with that, well. 
So it says you're going to get married or fired. Exciting. Your future's in the swells and curls. Peloton Australia, welcome. We're in this moment together, Peloton. Woo! Keep your eyes focused ahead. Richmond Meg, congrats on 100 rides. Breathe in and focus. Bring that chin to your chest. Yes, you can. Let's go, team. You got this. Take it to the next level. Good morning. Manly's Tom Trebojevic capped off a stellar NRL season, winning the Dahlia medal. But league's big night was overshadowed as a new video emerged of two Melbourne Storm stars caught up in a drug scandal. Good morning. Seven News understands there are more clips to follow. This latest one that's uh, appearing on social media this morning lasts around 30 seconds and it shows a Melbourne Storm player dancing about in a room. He then hops up on a table and that table is the same table that we saw in the first clip where there appeared to be a white substance on the surface. Now last night at the Dally M Awards, uh, Melbourne Storm coach Craig Bellamy of course picked up the best coach of the year. Uh, he was clearly disappointed, did admit Admit to uh, us journalists that two of his players are being investigated uh, by the NRL Integrity Unit. It's certainly not a good look for the game. Just days ago, we saw 19-year-old Reese Walsh from the Warriors uh, arrested on the Gold Coast, and he admitted to using cocaine as well. But on a much brighter note and a real role model for the game, Manly's Tom Trebojevic last night picked up the big award, the game's best and fairest. He was named Dally M Player of the Year, beating Cody Walker and Nathan Cleary. Uh, a real, a magnificent effort from Turbo this year. He only played 15 games but scored a whopping 28 tries. He battled injury, spent a fair bit of time on the sideline. Of course, uh, the most notable time was after he pulled his hamstring, racing a punter down the Manly Corso. But a big congratulations to him and the Manly Club. The AFL trade period doesn't start until next week, but clubs are deep in negotiations already. Geelong have a fight on their hands to keep young defender Jordan Clark, who's weighing up a return to Perth with an offer on the table from Fremantle. Adam Serra is expected to officially nominate Carlton as his club of choice. And the investigation into the Crows' pre-season camp in 2018 has wrapped up. The South Australian government's independent workplace safety regulator has cleared the Crows of any wrongdoing. The start of the Sheffield Shield season is in disarray. Today's first class game between Queensland and Tasmania was called off after four new COVID cases in Brisbane. The Tasmanians will fly home today, so Sunday's one day cup match looks highly unlikely as well. Aussie NBA star Ben Simmons is a step closer to leaving Philadelphia. The 76ers confirmed Simmons won't report to their training camp this week, a month before the season starts. His teammates even plan to fly to LA to bring him back to Philly, but Simmons told them, don't bother. I'm just disappointed that, you know, he's not here uh, because he knows it too. He knows we can win together. And the great Patty Mills was a hit at the Brooklyn Nets Media Day after joining New York's megastar team. After missing out on a medal in Tokyo, the Opals made a comfortable start to basketball's Asian Cup in Jordan. The Australian women beat Chinese Taipei 76-65 in their opener. To Whitcomb, yes! Three from the corner, from the ace of the game. The top four teams qualify for next year's World Cup in Australia. So Ben Simmons still a bit lost, but Paddy Mills looking right at home in Brooklyn. Doesn't he look yeah. at home? Very Thanks cool. so much, Matty. Next in Seven's Morning News, the national weather forecast. In the biggest season of women's cricket ever. Oh, what a catch! One challenge stands above them all. The Test Series. And it's all live and free. This day just gets better for Australia. Australia take on India. Thursday on 7. No rush, mate. It's only the first. Well, 
in position. It's no doubt as they scramble for the loose ball. Welcome back. Looks like the women are dominating again. Sure does. Four for Rachel King. I hope you put your same game on. Steve. Play everywhere, Australia. Tab. Long may we play. Play for Oz. <laughs> the next world champ. Don't like a beast. Hope you've had your wheat mix. Ice break. Bring it on. Break of life. I'm working. Work in another room. Ah. <laughs> Have a break. Have a Kit Kat. Does natural deodorant actually work? Schmidt's does. Made with natural ingredients including shea butter and coconut oil. It's the only EcoCert certified natural deodorant in Australia. Schmidt's. Really natural. Really works. Take it to the next level. Renew your living room with the plush spring sale. Receive up to 50% off when you buy two or more items. Shop in showroom or online. Lockdowns destroy jobs. They break up families and cause mental distress. Stop the lockdowns. Join the United Australia Party. Authorised by Craig Kelly for the United Australia Party, Brisbane. A hunter has stumbled upon a lost GoPro camera in the American wilderness. He took it home to see what was on the memory card in hope of identifying its owner, but got quite a shock when he pressed play. This is what he found. The camera had been turned on by a rather inquisitive bear. At one point, the huge animal picks the camera up in its powerful jaws, perhaps trying to work out if it's food. The bear eventually left it in the snow, taking off to find something a little tastier. Taking a look at the weather around the country. A trough is causing showers and storms over southeast Queensland and northeast New South Wales. A low with troughs is generating showers and thunderstorms over central South Australia and southern WA. High pressure is keeping elsewhere mostly dry and settled. Around the capitals, cloudy in Brisbane and 21, mostly sunny in Sydney and 23, a shower or two in Canberra with a top of 20, a late shower or two in Melbourne and 23, cloudy in Hobart and 17, a shower or two in Adelaide, 22 degrees there, partly cloudy in Perth, a cool 23 for Perth this time of year, a mostly sunny in Darwin and 33 degrees. And that is 7 News to Now. We'll keep you up to date throughout the day. Our next major bulletin is at 4pm. I'm Angela Cox from all of us here at 7 News. Thanks so much for your company. Have a great day.